There's a little boy in Kingston, Ontario. Some doctors are calling the one. What happened to him is so rare, they believe he may hold a cure for autism. And his incredible story is being touted as nothing less than a miracle. It's another 16 by 9 exclusive. Liam, what'd you find? Oh, you found your first Christmas gift, didn't you? You are watching video of Christmas Day with the Heinz family. At first glance, you might not think there's anything unusual about this picture of family bliss. But take a closer look. While everyone enthusiastically opens gifts, watch this little boy, Liam. Wandering around the room, he is absolutely uninterested in his gifts or his family. Liam! 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 He is in his own world, oblivious to what is going on. Because Liam, just two years old in this video, is severely autistic. But before you feel sorry for Liam, let me tell you that this is a story like no other. Because there's something very special and rare about Liam. Something doctors don't quite understand. Something that is being called a miracle. It's a miracle. It's by far a miracle that uh, you can, can't compare anything to. I mean, you're not going to compare it to. You can win the lottery, but... You would, I think you'd have better odds winning the lottery and to turn out what we have turned out here. Jason Hines is Liam's stepfather. He's been with him since he was just a little baby. Both Jason and his wife Debbie are themselves very special people. They are in the armed forces. Jason is based out of Kingston, Ontario, and his wife is a nurse presently deployed in Afghanistan. She saves the lives of soldiers and children every day. And if ever two people deserved a miracle, it would be these two. Liam's story began when he was about 18 months old. That's when his parents started to see something terribly wrong. They say the change happened around the time he received his vaccine for MMR, mumps, measles, and rubella. That is when we started noticing things. Liam would sit down and watch TV and you could call his name. There was no way he was just so in tune and or no matter what he was doing, it was just, you were like blocked out. Smile, I'll say cheese, Liam. He, he wouldn't give you a hug. He, very, very, uh, not very emotional at all, I should say. It was a uh, stay away kind of thing. Didn't want to be cuddled or anything like that. Liam was tested by doctors and the news was devastating to the family. On the spectrum of autism, Liam was one of the worst cases, severely autistic. Doctors painted a grim picture for Liam's future. Oh, basically it was about down to the point, well, we don't think he's going to be able to ride a bike. We don't think he'll be able to go to a normal school. We don't think he'll be able to play hockey like normal kids. He, he just won't be a normal kid kind of thing. I remember which one is old. Liam was quickly put into an intense behavioral intervention program where he spent hours being taught just basic life skills. And his parents committed themselves to treating Liam as if nothing were wrong with him. No changes in diet, no drugs, no special treatment, just an average little boy growing up. But it was heartbreaking to watch. Liam had no friends. He wanted no friends. He was inside an egg that might never crack open. His mental capability was determined to be that of a one-year-old. His sessions were videotaped. At times, it seemed like a long road to learn just the easiest things. No, we're going to sit here, actually, today. No, sit down in your chair, please. I don't want to sit on the chair. Yeah, we're going to sit down in the chair. And then something started to happen about the time Liam turned four. The eggshell started to crack. Liam began talking. Mommy! Responding. Say hi. Hi. Good boy. Interacting. Okay, get down. His mind was waking up, and his specialists believed he was so rapidly improving that they recommended he attend junior kindergarten in a regular school with a full time teacher's aide. Eventually, they just said it's not required a teacher's aide. So, as we can see, the, the shell just started to crumble, and inside was this. Uh, little boy and he just poof, went on his way again kind of thing. He was able to play hockey and soccer and he started to have normal play dates. It was a shocking transformation. Doctors told the family they believe Liam wasn't autistic anymore and they didn't know why. This is Liam today, 11 years old and as normal as can be. I'm stunned. Like any boy his age, he loves his video games. Do you have disco? It's rock band, Mary. It's only disco. rock band. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's in a dream. I've got to keep it my way. And he has 
quite the sense of humor. And what's your favorite subject? What did you do well in school? What's your favorite subject? Recess. <laughs> Liam is a straight A student, and nowhere is there any hint that he was ever autistic. It is something so rare in Canada that it caught the attention of doctors who were conducting an autism study out of Queen's University in Kingston. They were so excited to learn about what happened to Liam, they needed him for their study. They were so ecstatic to find a child that is was on the disorder and now not have it any longer. What they got was a boy cured of autism and no clue why. They wanted to study Liam's brain to try and figure out what happened and if it might hold a key to helping millions of children who are autistic. Liam was flown to Hartford, where Queen's University is partnering with the University of Connecticut for this special study. Eva Trobe is a graduate student at Queen's, working on her doctorate. She is testing Liam as part of this study. Red Hot Fireball. You can have that afterwards. It can be all yours. <laughs> It's his favorite thing, the Red Hot Fireball. The study is uh, trying to compare children who have moved off the spectrum to really investigate what is different about these children as opposed to children who remain on the autism spectrum throughout their lifetimes. How are you doing? Excellent. It seems like it would feel, it would make a lot of parents feel better to know that this is something that's possible for their children, but at the same time, we wouldn't want parents to think that that's possible for every child on the autism spectrum. But despite the optimism Liam has brought to autism, there's a major fear these experts can't ignore. It's really hard to tell. A lot of this hasn't been studied so far, so a lot of um, individuals who don't believe that children can move off the spectrum say that it's just a temporary period of time and once social situations become more complex when the child grows into a teenager, um, some of those symptoms would come back. And that's something that we are trying to study. We're looking at kids between the ages of 8 and 17, so hopefully we'll have a good answer to that question. But it is something so impossible to believe when you simply look at Liam. He's a normal kid in so many ways. And he has no idea how he may hold the key to saving millions of children from the lonely existence called autism. It's like, like the miracle antidote or something like that kind of thing. We've only got, it's like, wow. And like I said, I, I wish I could go out and just hand it out to people. But I, what do I hand out? That's the thing.